Coming up, SeaWorld inherits a big new resident. Universal Studios Japan creates a Resident Evil attraction that I only wish Chuck E. Cheese had when I was a kid. And it looks like CEO Bob Iger is sticking around a little bit longer. Also this week, Nikki Mancini along with Julie Martin talk about unique shopping experiences at Walt Disney World. All that coming up on this episode of The Diz Unplugged. This is The Diz Unplugged, episode 626 for the week of July 9th. The Diz Unplugged is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, specializing in helping you plan the perfect Disney World, Disneyland, and Disney Cruise Line vacations. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Coming to you live from the Bob Varley studio here in Orlando, Florida. I am here with my friends. Well, I'm Dustin West. I'm your host. And I'm here with, I've got to introduce myself. I'm here with my friends, uh, John Magi. Uh, oh. <laughs> Teresa Eccles, <laughs> <laughs> Nikki Mancini joining us, and Julie Martin. And back in the production nook, we have Mr. Craig Williams. There he is. Should we be worried that the date was wrong on the opening screen? <laughs> was it? It, it was like June 26th or something. <laughs> like some yeah, that was my fault. <laughs> oh, no. oh, there you go. We'll just have to fix You've that. You've ruined one. everything, we're Craig. In time, we're in a time warp, didn't you know? Yeah. I thought, that's not the right date. If I can go back and re- erase this morning, I'm good. <laughs> I just wanted to mention that I am uh, filling in as host right now. Pete is taking a break from hosting for personal reasons, so I'll be filling in in the interim. Uh, But let's uh, move right along. Does anybody have any housekeeping this week? Uh, I have a couple things I want to mention. First of all, big congratulations to our New England Give Kids the World Disney. Oh, yeah. Uh, We all had a great time. Yes. I had a lot of fun. One of my first, so this was exciting. Uh, they raised twenty two thousand three hundred and some odd dollars. Twenty two plus, right? Yeah. Twenty two plus, <laughs> and they have a ten thousand dollar corporate sponsorship uh, matching contribution coming too. So, congratulations to them. A lot of hard work. Congratulations to everybody who's done. Give kids the world meets this year and have ones coming up. We really appreciate all your hard work. We know how much work these things are. Yeah, and I just wanted to mention uh, a couple of the ones coming up here in the future. We have, of course, we just did the uh, New England Diz Meet this uh, past week, but we also have the Nova Scotia Diz Meet coming up in August. August 10th is when that starts. And Indianapolis uh, Diz Meet for Give Kids the World uh, happening on September 7th. You going to Indianapolis, John? No. No? I'm not going to Nova Scotia. I was going to catch a ride. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah, I've already been on a road trip this, <laughs> year, this month. I don't want to be on another one. Yeah. Um, also, there's going to be a Delaware Meet. Right. I don't. Have, I apologize. I don't have the information in front of me, but it's November. on the boards. Yeah. Do you know the dates? It's in November. Uh, That's all I remember. I thought it was actually in September. No, I think it's November. no November. September is November. Indianapolis. Yeah. First, first or second weekend in November. There is a thread God, on the boards which has all the information. Yeah. They actually have a schedule out and such, so Excellent. there is information out. So great, great job, everybody. Um, what else do I want to say? Um, I don't know. Tell us. You have a big list. I do. I have a list. But you know what? I don't know if I'm going to share all these. (laughs) Dizzapalooza 2013. A lot of questions about our party this year. We've been saying it over and over again. It's going to be December 6th. Uh, It's a Friday night. We'll be doing Toy Story Mania again. And we will have Pixar Place rented out. I don't have details yet. Once we have everything put together, we will be putting up a form for you to sign up for it. And don't worry, there's going to be plenty of spaces. Nobody will miss out on that. A lot of folks are very anxious to get information about how to yeah. sign up for that. We will also have discounted rooms at the Swan or the Dolphin available for folks who want to stay and have not booked a room yet. That's nice. Diz Cruise 5.0, getting a lot of questions about this. I know we've alluded to what's happening, what's going on. Wait a minute, Diz Cruise 5.0? Oh, uh, Podcast Cruise 5.0. Okay. I wrote Diz Cruise. <laughs> I have Diz Cruise on my brain. Podcast Cruise 5.0, um, yeah, a lot of questions about it. What are we doing? What's going on? We are still waiting for Disney to give us a date. Um, the big problem is that Disney's done away with group space, so mm. we no longer can hold a big group space. Really? Yep, and then sell out of it. So we're trying to find a date that works that okay. has space available that we can sort of get a good price on. Um, probably, I would say it's a good guess. It will be around the first week of December of 2014, but we do not have any specific information yet. Okay. So that's it. Stop emailing me. Stop posting <laughs> on the boards. I don't want to hear it. 
Talk Better? to Teresa. <laughs> yeah, email me. I'll talk about John. <laughs> I have a. I have another. Thank you, John. I have another thing I want to mention, and it's just to uh, mention again the Disneyland version of our show, uh, disunplug.com. You can go scroll down. You'll see the Disneyland show. It's the big green icon. We're orange. They're green. Check it out. It's uh, Tom Bell hosts that show uh, every Thursday, so you can see the Disneyland edition of the Diz Unplugged. That's what I have for housekeeping. Anybody else have anything? It's hot in here. Yeah. It, it is I feel like hot. I'm going through menopause. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> I do have some housekeeping. Wait a minute. What? Craig, do you know how to use the air conditioner? I do. No. He doesn't. Right. I don't. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, it's oh, picking up. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sweet baby Jesus. Wow. We got air. Okay. On. No, but okay. You got to check these out. They're little cat ears. The, what, okay. No, I don't well, think they're, they're cat they're ears. They're mouse ears. They're, they're mouse little, ears, but they're for the cat. But they're little mini ones. You can buy these. And you can. You can wear them yourself, right? Oh, yeah. They came with this incredibly long strap for, right. a, for a human, but I cut it down to cat size. And Are Klaus these designed them. for feline animals? They are at my house, baby. Klaus now has two. I saw Teresa, the photos. Let, yeah. let me see what they look like on. Oh. oh, that's tacky. But no, it looks amazing on a cat, though. For those listening, it's just a pair of mouse ears. But What are they called, Nikki? Five um, times smaller. These are the mouse ears that they started selling in the springtime. What was the have, purpose of them, though? You know, the Other purpose than... was kind of sketchy. They said that they could either be worn or collected. They came with, I think, a little keychain. A little keychain and came with. A, a full-size chin strap. The yeah. purpose was to make money. Yeah. Oh, yes. was that the purpose? <laughs> <laughs> well. So where are, they, where are they selling these things? Or I've seen them mouse everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Really? everywhere. Yeah, well, Downtown Disney has them in World of Disney as well as the Emporium. And they're twelve ninety five a piece of or two for fifteen. 15. What? I know. Okay, What's that you got about? the two for fifteen. Right? Obviously I got the yeah. two. Yeah, because yeah. we were standing there and I'm going, Oh, I just need I just wanted to get the red one. And then um Susan, who was with us, said mm-hmm. they're fifty two for fifteen. I'm like, Well, who wouldn't that with the <laughs> AP discount brought it almost back down to the price of one. So. I actually think they're really cute. They're adorable. Mm-hmm. And they're also fit on American Girl dolls. Yes. Well, the I full size ears, especially in the summertime, well, they make me sweat like a madman. I can't wear them. I sweat anyway, so I don't want to wear those. But these, you could just pin them to your hair. You wouldn't have to worry about it keeping the heat into your head. What is that thing sticking up on that red one? A mouse tail. It's a mouse yeah. tail. He's a boy. Why is it coming out of his head? I don't know. Oh, no. These well, are that's his, his booty. That's his oh, little pants that's with the it. yellow buttons. But. So why does he have ears on his butt? <laughs> that's a real good question it's a quandary, isn't it? i don't it's know a... but they had donald duck and pluto pluto Goofy. and lots of many many must yes. have been very popular and then they had the line that has just the neon colors they had pink yeah. green um yellow i think yeah mm-hmm. so aren't they cute i love they them. are very mm-hmm. cute they're adorable klaus sat not patiently no. as we strapped it to his head last night but he looked really he cute. did look cute <laughs> You could sense the anger in his eyes, though. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's kind of like okay. Dustin and you putting this in housekeeping. <laughs> yes, I could sense the anger in his eyes too. You just have to calm down after my dilemma getting here. Yeah, you had quite the experience. I know the tire just like shredded all over the road. It was it scary. Car troubles. Yeah, yeah. but I'm here. Good and times. alive! What? Yay! Did the what? monkey sabotage? I think the monkey did it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. Does anybody else have anything uh, nah. before we go into the news? Okay. Mr. John, All right. with the news. Our first news story. Rescued 245-pound sea turtle has new Orlando home. A rescued sea turtle has a new home in Orlando this Friday. Big Mama, which <laughs> oddly was my nickname in high school. <laughs> A 245-pound female loggerhead sea turtle was transported to SeaWorld Orlando from Gulfport, Mississippi. Big Mama had been receiving care at the Institute for Marine Mammal Studies since she was rescued after after the 210 BP oil spill off of the Louisiana coastline, according to a release. The release stated that she was no longer able to receive care at IMMS because the facility did not have space anymore. Mm. At the time of her rescue, she had severe bite wounds to her front and hind flippers, which made it difficult to swim properly. Big Mama will be placed under quarantine and monitored by animal experts and veterinarians. I love sea turtles. 245 pounds. Not to give away anyone's weight, but think about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to go into that, but I thought, think about that compared to your own body weight. 
That's gigantic. That's, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what huge. Was, what bitter, though? What was I'm sure a shark. <laughs> Some yeah. sort of a Predators. <clears throat> predator Predators, in the sea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She probably, I mean, they don't go into too many details, but I assume if she was in the oil spill, she right. probably got turned around. Yep. She probably couldn't swim away from predators. And oh, I think it's really nice she, that... The fact that she survived is right. incredible. Mm -hmm. I think it's really nice when you hear like SeaWorld and Bush Gardens, they, they bring in those mm -hmm. animals, um, even though... Big Mama's probably not going to be on display right. for the tourists to see. Um, well, she might be. They have a, um, a sea turtle when you go in the turtle trek. She's missing an arm. Well, I, I call it an arm because it's the front right. leg, but flipper. <laughs> front flipper, whatever. Flipper. And she's swimming around with her little nub. She's adorable. Yeah, I mean, they have displays with turtles in them, so why yeah. wouldn't they? Yeah. I mean, if they she's decide capable to release her. of right. swimming, like they said, she has a hard time swimming yeah. because of the bite marks. So maybe she has or to be in a weight. shallow pool mm -hmm. or something. She just sinks to the bottom. I don't I think too far, I don't think that's gonna, and that's an issue for turtles. I think they get to be that big and they just oh, okay. keep growing with so age. So she's just old. Oh, she's definitely old. Yeah. I, big mama. Big mama. I'm not a turtle scientist, so I don't know much about it. But it's nice that they're re uh, rehabilitating. Yeah. What do you call that? A turtologist. <laughs> turtologist. <laughs> turtologist. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. <laughs> That's something else. Yes. <laughs> I like how Teresa was judging her. Well, she's old and she's fat. <laughs> <laughs> I identify. All right. Our next news story. Real life Resident Evil simulator comes to Universal Studios Japan. Okay. I know we're nowhere near Universal Studios Japan. Right. However, this is really cool. Yeah. This excites me. I wish they had it here. Capcom is teaming up with Universal Studios Japan to provide the, mo the most ultra realistic resident evil experience yet <laughs> rather than just another themed roller coaster or a haunted house type ride where zombies pop up and spook you universal studios japan is giving you a gun <laughs> a limited supply of ammo okay. and throwing you into an onslaught of zombies the combination of universal studios japan's special effects abilities and capcom's expertise has resulted in an incredibly detailed recreation of recreation of Raccoon City to play in. It's called Biohazard The Real. Biohazard is the Japanese uh, name or version of the Resident Evil franchise. In the attraction, players will be equipped with a replica lifelike handgun with a realistic weight and a gauge that measures your level of infection. The goal is to get to the end before reaching maximum infection. Of course, being Resident Evil themed attraction, ammo will be sparse. So you'll have to be quick on your feet and efficient to survive. The attraction slash game will begin on July 19th and run until September 9th, 2013 in the Palace Theater in the New York section of the park. Then from September 12th to the November 10th, it will operate only on Friday to Monday or holidays. There's currently no word if it will make its way to the American Universal theme parks. I highly doubt that. The, the, the best part is the the gun is of real weight. Yeah, you know. Well, I also so is it real people dressed as zombies? They don't say. Uh, well, what I'm curious about is like how if if they're doing this, is it's almost like a virtual reality kind of thing, is what it sounds like. So, are they going to have multiple different rooms, or is it going to be a huge long line of people waiting to have their experience? And, and what you if walk you walk through? You don't ride through. It sounds to me like it's a walk through. Yeah. What if you fall down? Do they just like overtake you, or it's like walking down and they eat you? Well, they that would be pretty you awesome. have a, a meter of infection. My assumption is it's a walk-through dark ride, and my assumption is you're hinting, hitting things kind of like um, Men in Black. Yeah. So your gun would register if you hit or did not It's like hit. a really advanced version of Duck Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> Creepy version. I loved Duck Hunt. I do not yeah. want to play this. <laughs> I like zombies I am or a, walkers. Are you a Resident Evil fan or just a walker? No, I didn't, know they, they were, I didn't know Resident Evil were zombies. Are they zombies? Yes, go back and watch the movies. Yeah. It's just a, okay. it's a biological infection. Well, it's kind of like walk, Walking Dead, though. Right, that's, exactly. That's a, I think the, inside us all. the question... Kate, oh, oh, sorry. Sorry, but is Kate Beckinsale in those movies? No, no she's, in the, she's in the... Yeah, right. Say her name again. Mila Jovovich. Or oh, is like the that. resident girl. Girl. She's okay. the underworld <laughs> girl. Gotcha. She's the one who's not underworld girl. She is... Um, <laughs> she's in the movie. Vampire, underworld. have vampire movie. Right. Okay. What were you saying? I was going to say, I think the real question that you've brought up is, will this ever come to the United States? But with the, the nature of that game, with the, the real life gun and everything. Yeah, that's kind of funky. Yeah, yeah they may, yeah. may adapt it and they may make it more uh, game-like and more cartoonish. The but gun I, will be pink. <laughs> have an orange tip. Yeah. But I think Resident Evil and uh, Universal teaming up is a great mm -hmm. matchup. 
You know what I'm wondering, though? How do they keep people moving through the queue of the ride? Because here we have such an issue with line queues, but if they're walking through this ride, then how are they, they will keeping them along. on? Are they going to have the zombies chasing you no, so that it'll you be keep like, going? It or? would be like... Um, Halloween Horror Nights. Right. They Is keep you moving through those houses, whether the things are coming at you or not. If it's a walkthrough, if it's right. not just you're standing in one spot and the screen is moving around you, that mm-hmm. if it's a walkthrough, that's what I was saying. Is like, how long are these lines going to be if it's mm-hmm. one person going in at a time? But, you know. Yeah, so I, I don't have details of exactly. Yeah. Check it out. I think you should be able to have a segue. You should be like, <laughs> I think it would be cool if, you know, if other com- if, that would be cool. What kind of noise does your segue make again? I <laughs> I think it needs oil. <laughs> I think it would be interesting if, you know, uh, Disney or Universal or, or Busch Gardens or whatever other theme park companies started doing more video game related stuff. I, you know, I hadn't really thought about the possibilities of having a video game based attraction. Well, it kind of makes sense when you think about they're using so much space for uh, lands and stuff. Yeah. When you want to put attractions in, you could use much less space for that. Yeah. That's cool. I don't want to give anything away, but you guys saw something very cool on your Backstage Magic yeah. tour that could easily be incorporated into a theme park ride. That's kind of along the lines of what I was thinking, yeah. All right. And our final news story, Disney extends Bob Iger's CEO deal through 2016. The Walt Disney Company announced last Monday that it has extended Robert Iger's time as chief executive officer through June 2016, 15 months longer than the previously that pre- uh, 15 months longer than previously expected. Disney said in a statement that Iger's extension will, quote, provide continuity of Disney's corporate strategy to create long-time value for shareholders. Iger, who has served as CEO since 2005 and also serves as Disney's chairman, is facing a, new, is facing a few projects in the next few years, including the opening of Shanghai Disney Resort and the release of the new Star Wars movies in 2015. The extension also gives Iger more time to integrate Lucas Limited into Disney's, which Disney bought last year for $4.05 billion into Disney's plans. Uh, of course, the rumors have surfaced about um, the new parks and Star Wars land right. and all that stuff. Um, potential replacements for Bob Iger could include Disney Chief Financial Officer James Rizzullo and Walt Disney Parks and Resorts Chairman Tom Staggs. I don't know how this really affects us that he's staying on longer. Well, I mean, it's the only thing I can think of is like that article mentioned is, you know, he started these projects and for him to have a little more time to see them through um, instead of saying, okay, we've bought Lucasfilm or uh, let me just give it over to the next guy. You know, he obviously had a plan in place for that. So do you think he really does is that high up or do you think he just gives it out to farms it out? Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know if it goes that high up if Mm -hmm. he's making those, minute decisions but you know he's he's part of that i think the real question is that have they not found the right guy to replace him i mean they might be worried about who's coming in and can they replace him from what i've seen of tom staggs i really t- like tom staggs um you don't like him? i do oh okay. yeah but that's just because i think he's a nice guy i don't know anything about his <laughs> business <laughs> so he's a nice guy he's a great guy yeah i don't know i mean i'm i'm half of one Half a dozen of how do you say that? Dozen of one, half a dozen of another. No, six, six of, of one, one, half a dozen. <laughs> I can get it out. There you go. Um, Disney needs some fresh blood, but I think Iger's been doing a great job. He's been brought yeah. in a lot of new stuff. Well, when did he come in? Two thousand five. Yeah. So, all right, that's the last news story I have. That makes me sad. That's my last news story. Yeah. Makes me sad as I keep pulling my. Hair right <laughs> You're a little caught up. Okay. Well, thank you, John, for the news. Um, I think we're going to move into rapid fire. I think we have some interesting stuff today, especially Craig's. So I'm excited about that. Oh, Craig should go first then. No, we can't throw him off. We can't throw him off. Well, I don't even have a slide for mine. No. So. Oh, I mean, man. I can go. He got the date wrong. He doesn't have a slide. Well, do it. Sean, share. Sean share. Sean Let's hear the it. Slides. <laughs> <laughs> Not an excuse. That's okay, buddy. No, I'll, I'll get What's to that eventually. Okay, okay. John, please. Oh, you're rapid goodness. fire. Me again. All right. You again. I have two. I have one that you have a slide for. 
and one that you don't. First one is 2014 packages for Walt Disney World Resort will be about available for sale beginning July 10th, 2014. Um, we don't have any really details yet about what the new packages will have. We assume they're going to be almost identical to 2013, very minor changes. Uh, we do know that Walt Disney Travel Company has already raised the price on their packages for the rest of 2013, so we assume that was in preparation for 2014 coming out. So if you want to book for 2014, we're going to have that on our um, package uh, submission forms on dreamsunlimitedtravel.com, and you can put in a request for that or contact your agent and tell them, listen, I'm interested in something going forward, and they'll get you a quote for that. And my second rapid fire, something just came in that we're just hearing about, very strange, um, there is a sale date that has been chartered by a group. We don't know who they are or what they're doing, hmm. but uh, everyone who's on this sale date is being told that they are going to be moved. They have to move to a different sale date. And it's August 24th, 2014. Um, and here's what we're hearing is that if you're booked on this group, on this sailing already, Disney's going to give you a $100 onboard credit in addition to anything you've already gotten through other means. And they will preserve the effective date of your original booking, meaning that the price you get on a future booking will be reflective of when you made your original booking. Kind of complicated, but... That's yeah, confusing. Right. But it's a way to give you a better price. It's kind of like you got, you, you're you not being penalized for booking later because they changed the sale date right. on you. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind, though, is that it's not necessarily your new sale date will not be the same price as what you booked before. It's just you'll be in that same tier pricing. Um, if you are not contacted and you do not move, they're going to move you. So make sure you, they just, they're just going to move you willy-nilly to some future date, sale date, and they're going to park your reservation for you. So try to get in touch with either your travel agent or Disney Cruise Line by July 15, 2013, and make sure you move away from this chartered sale date. I hate when they do that. It's yeah. so upsetting. Mm. It just ticks yes. me off. They did that when they moved the magic back to um, Port Canaveral and people that had booked the magic out of Miami, they just moved their sale dates to well, something I know else. we have an agent who was affected because she posted about it on Facebook this morning. Oh. I, think, I don't have Facebook. Well, anyway, so yeah, <laughs> Facebook, I saw yeah. her complaining. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Which, uh, you know, I would too, because you plan around like your school year for right, your yeah. kids, your job, whatever. And are they reimbursing or doing anything for the people who already booked airfare or no, no, you no, had no. to book your airfare that far out. Yeah, yeah. you can't because it's like 300 and something okay. days you can book air. So mostly people probably haven't. No, it's just the onboard credit for the future selling and then also the uh, preserving the tier, pr the tier level that you've booked at. So it's not really a compensation, and it stinks because you've all. I mean, no matter what, even if it's over a year in advance, you've already made plans, you've already scheduled yeah. things and kids and you know stuff. So it stinks. But I'm interested to see who has the entire ship for the 24th. It's not us. Oh, that's what I was hoping. It's not Dreams <laughs> Unlimited Travel. It's going to be a surprise. <laughs> is that what it is? I just that's a surprise. I didn't know people could do that. I didn't know you could just yeah. book a whole we, ship and then kick everybody off. That was. Already yeah, mm -hmm. kind of money they got to do I that. Uh -huh. We looked into Lots. it actually. One of our first early on uh, podcast cruises, we looked into doing the entire ship. And what happens is you take the entire ship, and then you are able to sell the staterooms individually at whatever price you want. Oh my god! Oh. So you're paying Disney for the entire inventory, and then you have to make that money back. Wow! You can bump the price up or give it away free if you want. Good, absolutely good. Thank That's you for not doing that <laughs> on the first podcast cruise. <laughs> Like that was trip. overwhelming enough. <laughs> you don't want every single stateroom to be a dessert? I don't blame you. All right. That's it for my rapid fires. Thank you, John. Can you imagine? I mean, the first I'm trying time. to think of the fish extenders. Oh, my God. Yeah. You had to do yeah. every room on the ship. Oh, that's why I don't do those. Oh, well, well, I'll tell you this. One thing Peter said about the next podcast cruise is we're doing a seven night. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't want to give anything away, but we're not. We just he did, but go he ahead. He wants to do a seven night, and he wants no limitations. He wants as many people who want to attend to Well, attend. yeah. So, well, we've always kept it. Yeah. We've right. always tried to mm -hmm. limit it in the past because we didn't want it to be too overwhelming. So, But we're used to it now. Yeah, we are used to it. I mean, we are. Yeah. You know. Seriously. We get, and I think we're getting good at it, too. <laughs> yeah, I approach not, people that aren't even I'm in our just, group and introduce I myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Teresa. Do the podcast? There's some crazy lady up on deck was talking to us. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> Passing out magnets. Who are you? <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you, John. All right, Teresa. Oh, it's my turn. It is your turn. Um, here are some rehabs and interesting things going on at the Magic Kingdom. Prince Charming's Regal Carousels closed 8-1 through 8-21. Pirates of the Caribbean closed 7-27 to 7-13. Jungle Cruise closed 8-19 to 9.30. Ooh, that's a long one. Prince, Char- oh, Prince Charming's on there twice. Hmm. Liberty Tree Square Riverboat, 8.5 to 8.9. Space Mountain, 9.3 to 9.5. 9.10 to 9.12. 9.23 to 9.26. That's weird. That is weird. It's like That's the one they're doing in phases. Yeah. yeah. So you might have breaks or you might not. I yeah. can't remember how that goes. Um, just don't write it at all. Um, <laughs> Enchanted Tiki Room closed 7.31 to 8.28. Walt Disney World Railroad closed 9.30 to 10.20. Peter Pan's flight closed 9.30 to 11.13. What's open? In September, it sounds like everything's closed. In August, starting at the end of July. That's just the Magic Kingdom, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Teresa, now read them again, and you're stuck by the side of the road waiting for your husband to fix your car voice. What the crap? <laughs> <laughs> you open this up, or I'll do anything I <laughs> Oh, Lord. Uh. I was calmed down. <laughs> and I got you riled up again. I was, the, I was chilling. Gosh. <laughs> okay, I'm good. You've got your mute. <laughs> Thank you, Teresa. Uh, so now we can enjoy nothing in September. We're all like, nothing. Don't go. Yes. Okay, Mr. Craig. Well, me now? You now. Tell us. Um, what's exciting? Zebras are back in the safaris. And um, Apex? Adex? Adex. 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 Yeah, they're there. Where's the slide? I want to see the zebra. There is no slide. I, this Thank was the thing you were excited about, Dustin? Yes. I was really excited. You are a freak. They took the zebras away? Well, they had, originally the zebras had been on the... Okay, yeah, I'm getting into my zebra speak now. Uh, originally the zebras had been on the savannah where all the other hoofed animals are, but they didn't get along with the other hoofed animals. They would For other fight. reasons. Yeah. Okay, we won't go into it, but go ahead. Right. They would fight and be violent and whatnot. So they created that zebra glen or zebra forest or whatever it was called recently. And then apparently they weren't happy there either. So now you're saying that they've... Yeah, they were back there yesterday. And I heard that they were actually back last week. I think that was the first week. Mm-hmm. What's interesting, though, is where they are. When you go past and Monkey the Point... Well, <laughs> pretty much. Tigers. When you go past Monkey Point, you'll see the big uh, rock point. for the lions and such. And then uh, the zebras are right there. So the lions are on By the, the rock looking. And then the zebras are right below them. So they're kind of drooling looking at the zebras. I seriously how, yeah, they're it, drooling. How, they're tense. It, it's how tense for the zebras, I know. though, right? They didn't seem bothered at all yesterday. They're over there talking amongst themselves. They're just and going, hanging what, out. What's yeah. going on? Yeah, yeah. What's this about? And the monkeys are there too, you said? It's right right afterwards, yeah. They're just, they're all getting Have you together. been on this far, Teresa? <laughs> is that the walkthrough thing where you're walking through the... No, no it's with the gun. <laughs> oh, no. is this the... Oh, the bridge, the bridge. Yes, the bridge. Yeah. ride the big truck. Oh, I did that Big red, yeah. little red. Yeah. <laughs> That was fun. So, wow, they're back. Yeah. The, the zebras are problem children. Where have they been? All, like I just said, all over the place. They just keep putting them in different up. exhibits, hoping that they'll they'll be all right. Are these Altoids? <laughs> <laughs> they might be something else. Are there zebras? Are there monkeys? I'd... <laughs> she mentioned monkey? monkey point. I've been there okay. many times. Okay. Oh. <laughs> thank you, Craig. Hey, you're welcome. And additionally, thank you, Nikki, for knowing what... Craig should there. have said. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate it. No. God, no. throw him under the bus. Nick. I'm not. Oh, no, Welcome okay. for the club. That's okay. All right. Thank you, Craig. Uh, Nikki, if you have something. Yeah, I actually have two. Um, the first one, Monsters, Inc., Laugh Floor at Magic Kingdom has been upgraded to include Monsters University. So that's pretty exciting. The movie just came out, I think it was, what, two weeks ago? And they already updated the attraction. There's so, what's different... different? Uh, there's different scenes in both the pre-show as well as during the main show where they talk about Monsters University and the interaction between the audience includes things that they would learn at the university itself. Oh, cool. So I thought that was kind of neat. Is Mike's little nephew still in it? He is. He's my favorite. Is he wearing yeah. the little sweater, the Monsters no, University sweater? No, they didn't put him in the sweater. Oh. Isn't he too young to go to college, I would yeah, think? Probably. Yeah. Plus the timing of that wouldn't it would throw off the yeah, continuity I mean, yeah. of... Yeah, it was Mike in college, not... Right, right, not, not the right. nephew. But. Yeah, that's really cool. I'm glad that they're adapting that. Yeah, I, w- I was pretty impressed with that, and a lot of people were coming out of the line queue saying how, you know, surprised that they were that they were able to do that so quickly after the movie came out. So well, that was neat. Planned it. I mean, yeah, they. I mean, they yeah. have those digital elements ready to go, probably, and all they have to do is just plug it in. 
that's, exactly. That's the way of all future attractions. Yeah. You're going to see all future attractions now be able to be up, upgraded. updated and upgraded. Virtually. Yep. Instead of having to go in and close actually down. close down, mm-hmm. paint things, change things. Anything that has a screen mm-hmm. involved with it, they can, they can change. If they really wanted to, they could change it almost overnight. Which I, I love that stuff. And, yeah. and, and also things on stationary tracks. Like this is, you know, when, uh, when Test Track got its first major upgrade, they were able to change the ride experience for that because it's, it's on a stationary track going up and down. They were able to add drops, subtract drops, uh, add different effects and whatnot. I love that. I love that That's they don't. All very true. Yeah, it is very true. Very true. The future. <laughs> don't know how interesting it is, but it's, it's true. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Nikki. Okay. I actually have one, one more. more. Oh, you have one, one more. more. Yeah, this is a quick one. Uh, I think it was last week's show or the week before, Kathy had mentioned the towels that you can wear around your neck when you're in the parks and they keep you cool. Well, they actually, I think as of yesterday, they're selling them now in the theme parks. I saw them over at Animal Kingdom. They have them by the Mr. Fans that you can get, and they're only seven fifty, which is actually a lot cheaper than the one that I bought, which was $15 at a sporting goods store. So they're called Frosty Towels. They're a white towel, and what you do is you soak them in water, and then you just drape it around your neck, and it keeps you cool for a couple of hours, and then you can reactivate them by you know putting them in ice and things like that, and it really makes a difference. That's it does. A, you know, that's they the really only do. way that I can get around Animal Kingdom at, so at they were, certain yeah. times. They were listening to Kathy. Yeah, they must have been. Uh, yeah. That's pretty powerful. You had that at the New England meet. I did. You were using somebody's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so where are they selling these again? At this point, they're in Animal Kingdom by any of the stands that have the Mr. Fans that are okay. on sale. Um, and by the drink carts, I noticed them there. Yeah. But I'm assuming that they would be in the other parks pretty much throughout the week. That's good. Yeah. It's summer. It's hot. That's, Definitely. It's good. It's better than carrying a cold washcloth in a Ziploc bag, <laughs> yeah. which I've done. <laughs> Me too. Or getting a paper towel out of the restroom. Because uh, then it I've sticks done. to you. Yeah. <laughs> Picking brown stuff off of you the oh, whole no. time. That's sad. <clears throat> well, if you're about to stroke out, you need something to chill out, right? Because it... Animal Kingdom doesn't have a lot of indoor air condition spaces. No. That's, I know where they are, but still. Yeah. Any park in the summer, and it's brutal out oh, yeah. there. Mm-hmm. Especially, so. yeah, Animal Kingdom and Epcot, you're walking around. You know, one thing I saw yesterday, though, at certain in- intervals throughout the line queues, they actually have misters that are now blowing into the line queues themselves. I don't mm-hmm. remember seeing that. Like the big fans that have water Not vapor. the big fans. They're coming up from by the plants, and they're misting oh. throughout the line queues. And I thought that was new. Because I had never experienced that before. Those are not for you. Those are for the plants. No, they're not. (laughs) (laughs) What about me? It's called irrigation. (laughs) Really? Well, I was standing in front. New Jersey. (laughs) No, I've seen it in the line queues for the. the... I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. For the plants. I I needed M&M. Oh my god! Celebrate in the queue for um, the safari. I've seen those. Yeah. Again, I don't know how interesting it's yeah, seen it too. I was fascinated. I'm right with you. Very cool. Thank you, Nikki. <laughs> Julie. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't need anything because mine's short and sweet, but um you can now go and actually meet Sophia the First over near the Disney Junior stage show. Um just like you can meet Jake out there mm-hmm. and I don't remember who else now. But anyway. The, so. Is Bob the Builder there and those guys? Bob and the Builder is not Disney. No. Little Einstein? I th- no, oh. I think the characters <laughs> outside. I don't know. I'm just That's just something names. you watch on TV. <laughs> I'm just naming names. The characters that you meet and greet outside right now are uh, Sophia the First. You're talking about. It's usually Jake and the Neverland yep. Pirates. And that's, that those the only, that's the only one I've ever seen. Yeah. It's actually Jake. They, um, well, I used to work at the Disney, what well, was called uh, Playhouse Disney at right. that point. And, um, oh, who was there then? Well, when I was there, it was uh, Bear in the Big Blue House. Oh. And, uh, um, Were you then, one of the people on stage, jump, bouncing no. around? No, no, no. no. I, was, I just worked the attraction, so I, oh, okay. I made sure kids didn't run up the stage, oh, okay. you know, get hurt. Um, but it seemed like every time there's like a new show on Playhouse Disney or Disney Junior, every time, you know, yeah. that's, that's where they're going to rotate those characters in. Which is good, because, yeah. you know... Yeah. If they had Bear in the Big Blue House and they're still and they weren't airing the show, right. <laughs> my kids would be like, what is yeah. this? And yeah. my kids would be like, oh, look, it's still there. Oh, I, sad. I liked Bear in the Big Blue House. Oh, yeah, it was great. Yeah. I was, was way a big too one old to be watching that. That was, that was Grace Jim Henson. Stella one. Awesome. I can't remember which one. Maybe Stella. So, yeah. But I'm excited because Finley and Ferris will be excited. They both love Sophia. That's I just wish they'd bring some of the other characters, too. Like, even, like, the siblings, maybe. And yeah. um, Clover the Rabbit. 
clover. <laughs> that, that whole area, the animation courtyard is a great place for kids when you have the, if, if your kids are interested, the art of Disney animation, there's some things for kids to do in there. And of course, uh, Little Mermaid, Voyage of the Little Mermaid, and, and then Disney Junior. It's a great area, great place to meet characters. Yes, it is. Inside, yeah. in the air conditioning. Yes, all of it is. So what's up with your frog? Oh, that's for later. Oh. Sorry. Shh. Shh. I wrote Shh. secrets. <laughs> Secret treasures. <laughs> you should tell me these things. I'm not good with secrets. It's with your frog. Nobody can see it. I, <laughs> oh, I thought she was then going to pick it up and say, oh, this is, you know, <laughs> Sophia the frog. second. I don't know. I don't know what they're called. Teresa has her monkey. <laughs> Marco. <laughs> well, well, thank oh, you. Oh, I'm done. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you, Julie. <laughs> that is uh, going to do it for Rapid Fire. Before we move on to... Um, we had the Where in the World uh, contest a couple weeks ago, and you guys submitted that. Before we get to that, did you want to mention those RFID um, mugs? or? Yeah, um, there is a post on the boards about it already on the Unplugged board. But supposedly this week, the new RFID mug system has been uh, unveiled over at the All-Star Resorts. And what it is is that there's a tiered program for people to buy their refillable mugs and you're allowed a certain amount of days where you can use them at the machines. Right. And I believe it goes up to about fourteen ninety nine or so for a seven-day trip. And then after that, you cannot use your mug. So it's another way that they're trying to limit people bringing their mugs back Wait, from stops past you. trips. The machine won't work? It won't work. Right. It has a sensor in it. It has an RFID chip in it so that it won't work at all. So on our next cruise, uh, those who going on the next cruise, Royal Caribbean does that with a soda program. You buy a mug soda and actually program. put it in the... It's called the soda program. You pay uh, money up front to get soda the entire week Mm -hmm. on your cruise. When you put the mug in, it actually tells you this mug is good until this date. Wow. And it also will limit you on refills. So if you're trying to, let's say, refill it and pour it into another cup, it says you have to wait 10 minutes to come That's what this does, too. It's called Rapid Fill. That's the official name of the system. And it is giving, I think it's about five minutes or so in between each refill. But but the problem that I had with it was, why are they putting this technology out there if we're working on the Magic Band system? Why are they spending money on a totally new system just for mugs when they could be just, you know, syncing it up to the bands themselves? Who's going to have their band and got to... Put your band and your cup up well, there. You'll be wearing those bands all along because right. you'll be paying for your food and, and such using those bands. You wouldn't be able to control how much beverage you're drinking, though, could it? Not, yes. not how much, like, per fill, but once a certain amount of days runs out. Because I've seen it in action before. Mm-hmm. They've been doing this. I mean, they've been yeah. testing it for over a year oh, now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I went to, like, I think, Pop Century or something, put my mug in, and it says, you have seven more days left mm-hmm. on your vacation. And, you know, psh, soda. But then after that, yeah, you're not going to be able to use it. I have a feeling they invested in the mug technology first. Because don't you remember we started seeing it at the water parks and stuff? So, Yeah, so they've been working on this. Yeah. I don't think they can just flip a switch and yeah. have it. So you put one your, more way to limit us. And I imagine people are not happy about this. Oh, you know they're oh, not. Oh, no, they're not. They're not. If you look at some of the replies on the boards, people are very upset about what's going on. <sighs> Dang, I can't get unlimited soda, you know. Or use my cup. The second time around. Well, if they, you know, they what they used to do was change the design of the mugs yeah. every mm-hmm. year so that it was a little more visible. But I've never, ever seen a cast member go up to someone and say, sir, yeah. you mugs have, have the wrong mug. That's a universal mug. Please leave. <laughs> <laughs> mugs have been the same for a while now. Yeah. But you're right. I mean, the, the refill stations are so far away from the cashiers. Right. No one's going to stop you from doing it. <laughs> no, this is Disney's answer to... How do I? How do they save money? And they right. save money by soda control. Soda, soda control, soda control. Oh mm-hmm. which is probably good for our health too, right? Well, that's not their responsibility. No, well, I know. <laughs> that is my own. responsibility. Well, okay. Speaking of cast members not saying anything, um, it got ridiculous whenever I was in the parks this past weekend. Someone was taking pictures with their flash on throughout Soren the entire time, oh. and not a single cast member said something to them once they got off the ride. Right? Really? And at Universal, we would like jump all over that person and say, "Hey, you can't do it again." There's like, nothing they can really do during the ride because you're 50 feet up in the air. Oh, they can tip those seats forward. <laughs> <laughs> Just pull you right One out. out. <laughs> don't they stop it? Dang I mean, I think you. I've been on. The Haunted Mansion before when flashes have gone off and they stop the ride. But I'm I that think, kind of person. But I think Soren's a different mechanism. <laughs> yeah. It, they do it. have a loudspeaker, though, that they could have easily... I mean, they mm. would have disrupted everyone on the ride, but the right. person was already doing it with their camera. And 
I talked to a coordinator about it, and they just gave me the runaround, like, oh, it wasn't safe. He should have never had that out there, and he shouldn't have been doing it, but yet they're not going to do anything about it. And it's just, it's a really passive way to look at it. I mean, if it is a safety issue, that ride should have been stopped right. immediately right. after he pulled it out. That's more then, about it. That's a show issue. That's not a... It is. And what a stupid reason to take pictures. And he's ruining the whole ride for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, another job Disney needs. They need smoke police, which I would gladly volunteer to be a smoke smoke police woman. So I could tell people to stop smoking in areas that are not designated smoke smoke police. I loved it. It peeves me. Oh, it peeves me. When I was a cast member, that was like my favorite thing to do. Because when I worked at Animal Kingdom, coming off of Pangani uh, Forest, there's this little nook that there's in the trail and you can kind of hide behind there and every time I'd get that whiff of smoke and I'm like ooh this is my favorite thing <laughs> put it out buddy you're going to stomp that thing out or get over there the closest one is Camp Mini Mickey go away yeah so now we need camera police camera police yeah. smoke police I just yell at them and tell them to stop I'll be in the right vehicle next to them we'll say no flash photography <laughs> see stop. if I had been on the, next to that guy on Sora and I would have said something yeah I would have yeah. Yeah. definitely I was like two benches away and I still screamed. <laughs> <laughs> I have a hard time believing that. that. Oh, I, I can really? Have, Craig yeah, can get loud. I can get loud. I can, I can, can be get ragey. Proud. Show us. Edgy. But look, look, he's like, I can be ragey. I can, get it. I can be very, very <laughs> upsetting. <laughs> I will turn into a robot. We only tease so you because edgy. we like you. <laughs> we do like you, Craig. <laughs> well, thank you, Craig, for adding that on. That was a good, it was, you know, it was a good, good discussion. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Well, before we wrap up uh, the uh, this new show, we do want to talk about the uh, where in the world prize winner. Um, Did anyone guess it? Well, every answer was different. Let's bring up the photo uh, real quick. Well, I don't have the original photo. Uh, Okay. Well, the original photo was a close up of a lamp, and here's the full picture. That is at Coronado Springs, and the winner is Gabriella. Terry and Matthew, I don't know how to say your last name. I'm oh, sorry. Bruxelles? Bruxelles or Bruxelles? something? Bruxelles. I was about to say, her name, her first name sounds really familiar to me, and yes, you're right, but I don't know how to say it either. Uh, okay, <laughs> yeah. Um, they uh, they got it right. They sent it in. Uh, now, are these the, Craig, are these the ones that had the coordinates? Yeah, they actually had the exact coordinate of <laughs> oh the my light. Oh, gosh. That <laughs> when I, when I brought it up last week or the, or the week before, um, we said, submit it by July 1st. The more specific you are, the better chances you have. I said, even if you want to throw in the geographic coordinates, that's even more. And well, how did they know that? I, I guess Google Earth or something like that. But they had to know where it was to begin with, and yeah. they got it right. It's on the walkway um, from kind of like the uh, the main area of Coronado where the market places, the pepper market and all that. If you're walking toward the Aztec pool area. The dig site. Yeah, the dig site. That's what it's called. Um, oh, I walkway. see it now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see it now. Congratulations, guys. Yeah. Uh, don't they win a $50 gift, gift card? Yes. yes. Not, no. This is what they win is a $50 Disney gift card. Yep. And I'll be contacting you. <laughs> yes, you will. So we'll wow. get that all set up. Very good. Okay. Well, that's pretty much all I have. Does anybody else have anything to add before we go to break and then we kick it over to these guys? No? All right. Well. Let me just pull this up. That is going to do it for our show, uh, this particular segment anyway. Make sure you stick around for Nikki and Julie's segment on those uh, interesting and unique shopping items at Walt Disney World. Thank you, everybody. We certainly hope you folks enjoyed it, and we will see you for the next edition of the Diz Unplugged. Stick around. Stick around.